Okay, now that we've introduced the concepts of potential flow and shown how potential flow fields can be solved for given the governing equation, let's review some elementary potential flows. And this is 3.9 to 3.16 in Anderson. So the first and most basic is the uniform flow. We have some xy coordinate system. This flow field is just v infinity equals a constant. So therefore, the potential is v infinity x, and the circulation is zero. So this is the basic building block for nearly all air, uh, potential flows of aerodynamic interest. The next one is the source or sink flow. Which has streamlines either emanating from or flowing into the origin or some other point. The radial velocity is one proportional to one over r, and the tangential velocity is zero. The velocity potential is lambda over two pi one r, where lambda gives the strength of the source or sink. If this is positive, it's a source. If it's negative, it's a sink. The circulation is zero. The third is doublet flow. Here we have a source and sink in line as the separation distance between them goes to zero. So here's the source. Here's the sink. And we're moving them together so that this distance goes to zero while the strength of these which are equal uh, but opposite in sign times the distance so lambda delta x is constant we call this product kappa and the stream uh, sorry the velocity potential is kappa over 2 pi cos theta over r. What does this look like? Something like this. Where rotating in opposite directions, so there's some net flow in between these two lobes. Kappa over 2 pi. And some constant c gives you this size of these various circles. So you can see that the doublet has both a strength, kappa, and a direction. Um, this could be oriented any which way. And now we can start putting these together and getting something more interesting. So if we take a uniform flow plus a doublet, this gives the non-lifting flow over a cylinder. With the uh, stream function the infinity r sine theta times 1 minus r squared where capital R is the cylinder radius. And remember because this is an inviscid flow the drag on the cylinder will be zero. So 
The fourth flow of interest is vortex flow. Finally, here, we have a case with non-zero circulation. Essentially, the flow field consists of concentric circles around a given point. So that V theta is proportional to 1 over R, uh, while Vr is 0. The circulation is positive if the rotation is clockwise. So the velocity potential here is negative gamma over 2 pi theta, and the stream function is gamma over 2 pi long r. So combining the uniform flow, the doublet, and the vortex gives the lifting flow over a cylinder, which corresponds to a rotating cylinder. V infinity R times theta, 1 minus R squared over r squared plus gamma over 2 pi 1 r over r. Again, r equals r is the surface of the cylinder. And for those of you who've forgotten or who don't know what this looks like, I'll sketch out this flow field. There's our cylinder, so we don't care about what's happening inside because we're modeling this as a solid object, and the streamlines look probably something like this. So the stagnation points, where the velocity is zero, depend on this non-dimensional parameter, gamma over 4 pi to the infinity r, which if less than 1, we get two distinct stagnation points on the cylinder, as shown here. If this parameter is exactly equal to 1, there will be a single stagnation point at the bottom of the cylinder, and if this parameter is greater than 1, there will be no stagnation points on the surface. There will be stagnation points out in the flow down here somewhere. One, the other will be somehow inside the body, but we don't care about that because we're assuming this is a solid object. So notice that this flow field is now asymmetric about the x-axis. So the lift is non-zero. The drag, however, is still zero because it's symmetric about the y-axis and also because it's an uh, incompressible potential uh, inviscid flow and there's no way uh, to generate drag in a 2D uh, flow of this type. So the lift coefficient of this flow per unit span is related to the circulation as follows, and from this we can get that the lift per unit span is the free stream density times the free stream velocity times the circulation, and hopefully this is familiar to those of you who took the course last summer as the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem. This is a model for the generation of lift, and it applies not only to rotating cylinders, but to anything, including airfoils. 
So let's talk a little bit more about the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem and how lift is generated. So as I said, this applies, this equation applies to anything, including airfoils, um, and it works because we can get the flow over the airfoil by distributing vortices on its surface. And since this flow is derived from a vortex flow, there's a relationship there that allows uh, for the generalization. And essentially, uh, you can think of the lifting flow over uh, over an airfoil as the superimposed solution of many lifting flows over small cylinders which are distributed on the surface of that airfoil. One thing that's important to recall is that this circulation theory of lift is a model. So it's not really how lift is generated. Remember that the true sources of aerodynamic forces are pressure and shear stress distribution. But it's easier to get the circulation than the surface pressure, so the focus is on calculating the circulation. <laughs>